So you're thinking tiger barbs? You crazy. As a guy that has 300 tiger barbs at any one point in his 800 gallon aquarium, I know a thing or two about tiger barbs. They're super active fish. They're very colorful. And in general, they school like no other. They'll go back and forth on your tank and they're great, but they're kind of some obnoxious idiots. They will kind of torment everything, including themselves. I don't want to say they're necessarily nippy. They're just very curious. And it's kind of like just having a group of like 15, 15 year old boys that are wrestling. Like they're, they're not really hurting each other, but they're loud and obnoxious. And that's the thing to know. And you got to feed them really well. I find flake foods work well, small pellets, like uh, like beta sized pellets, blood worms work well. Although if you go too heavy on frozen blood worms, that kind of stuff, you'll really see your female tiger barbs balloon up and they'll get real fat and they get about, you know, that big around, honestly. And uh, the males get all the color, the females not so much. You'll get different patterns on them. Some will be like really nicely striped. Some will have broken stripes. You can now get the glow uh, tiger barb. There's also the albinos. There's long fins. There's greens. There's a lot of variants that have been selectively bred. Then there's the glow line. And so there's infinite variety. You can go with the kaleidoscope effect where you have like, I've got two of every color and every type and it looks cool. Or you can go with a one big dedicated school and get much more of that Asian biotope that you might like to look at. And so that's what I actually recommend is a very, very big group. The more you can buy, the better. Uh, at my store, for instance, I never recommend less than seven. And really, I'd like to see at least 12. If you're just going, ah, yeah, I'd like to put five tiger barbs in my aquarium, you're probably setting yourself up for a disaster because either A, you don't have, a, have room for more tiger barbs. They're going to get about two and a half, three inches. Or B, you aren't really that invested and you probably shouldn't. Like it's one of those things you need to go all the way in and get a big group or go, ah, you know, that's not the fish for me. And so they're very, very hardy fish. That's the good thing. pH from six, eight to probably eight, eight. Like they just, I've, I've never seen them like not thriving in any acidity of water, any hardness of water. I've seen them kept with turtles even like where they can get away. And even though the water's real dirty, like they're just a, a very like street smart fish. Like they're really, really good. You know, they can handle anywhere from 72 degrees to 82 degrees. They can go a little bit either way. They're not that crazy difficult to breed, but do know once you put tiger barbs in, you're committed to having a tiger barb tank until you rehome them or you do something else. And I've seen them pick on large arowanas. They like, they just, they just pick at stuff and they'll, they won't kill stuff typically, but they'll pick at it. And a lot of times that's enough stress to kill something. And they're so fast and they eat so much. They can just starve out your best tank mates. So unfortunately I recommend very few fish go with them. Maybe some bottom dwellers. You've got your tiger barb school and you have a really, really stunning display, but know that it is a display of tiger barbs. That's the focus. Put them in with plants, that orange nose, and the stripes against green plants with some bottom dwellers. Mm, great combo. I love it. I've done it myself for a long time. And if you're looking for that look, I recommend it.